let's be honest. Most pro DJs only do three things. But what makes your DJing sound so good is their mastery of those three techniques. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you those three techniques that you absolutely need to know and master to be a pro DJ. Besides of course, beat matching, selecting songs, mixing key, reading the crowd, using stems, negotiating rates, setting up gear, talking to girls, paying your taxes, etc. Whew, who pays taxes? Here's the hard truth. The DJs in DJ Max Top 100 list all really do the same transition to varying degrees. And the reason why they employ this mixing style, despite the multitude of amazing techniques they could potentially utilize, is quite simple. This Top 100 DJ transition is undeniably the easiest and most reliable way to mix. Now before we break down this must-learn transition, it's worth mentioning that all the tracks used in this video are available for free download below. Additionally, if you're a member of the channel, your download will include even more free stuff. Now there are three levels to this transition, each progressing in difficulty. And if you manage to learn all three, you'll be set for a lifetime of DJing as this is the only mixing technique you'll ever need. So let's start with level 1 and work our way up. So with your current song loaded up and playing, do the following things. Ensure all your EQs are at the 12 o'clock position and your opposite deck's volume is all the way down. Next, load up your next song and match its BPM with the current song. With your next track loaded and queued up, play it when you reach your current song's mix-in point, which in this case is here. Next, beat match your next song. With that done, it'll be time now to blend. So here's what the pros do. They'll lower the low EQ of the current song and bring the next song's volume up. And once they near their mix out point, which in this case is here, they'll lower their current song's volume to completely mix out. So by focusing on the low EQ of the current song and the volume of the next song, DJs create ample sonic space for the upcoming track. This allows it to seamlessly enter the mix without overpowering the overall sound. And although pro DJs are aware of the multitude of knobs and faders at their disposal, the key to this subtle blending technique lies in its simplicity. Now the levels of this transition will progressively increase as we incorporate different effects and elements into the mix. So with that said, let's move on to level 2 where we'll enhance this basic transition by incorporating the echo effect. For level 2, there are three key actions. Activating the echo effect on the current song, increasing its intensity, and lowering the current song's volume. These actions are performed as we approach the mix out point and they all need to be executed quite quickly. Put your hands up in the air, put your hands up in the air. Put your hands up in the air, put your hands up in the air. Put your hands up in the air, put your hands up in the air. Put your hands up in the air, put your hands up in the air. Now once you're comfortable with the pace of level 2 and activating that echo effect, it'll be time enough to progress to level 3. For level 3, we'll incorporate a high-pass filter sweep, and that's when we turn the filter knob clockwise. So as you approach the mix out point, activate an echo effect on the current song, increase the effect's intensity, and gradually apply a high-pass filter to the track. Then just before reaching the mix out point, bring the volume of the current song down to smoothly transition out completely. So that's a transition these top 100 DJs mostly abuse. <clears throat> I mean use. But if you want to add more variety to your level 3 transition, you can also substitute the filter sound color effects with the noise or dub echo effects.
Now, Pro DJing isn't solely focused on technical mixing. Its primary focus is the crowd and ensuring they stay on the dance floor. Because honestly, what's the point of having DJ skills if you can't keep the crowd dancing? So the secret to sustaining energy on the dance floor lies in knowing exactly when and where to mix tracks in and out. So to keep things simple, there are four important sections in the song. The intro, build up, chorus, and outro. And pro DJs mix in and out of those specific sections only. So sometimes, they blend the intro of their next song with the outro of the current song. Other times, to surprise and wow a crowd, they blend the buildup of their next song at the buildup of the current song to perform a drop switch transition. So let's cut to the chase and learn the four best sections to mix to keep the dance floor going. To maintain the energy of a mix, it's best to mix the intro of the next song at the chorus section of the current song. This way, when the chorus of the current song ends, the first verse or buildup of the next song begins. To hype the crowd and potentially surprise them, it's ideal to mix the build-up section of the next song at the build-up section of the current song. This way, when the build-up of the current song ends, the chorus of the next song begins. To have more time to mix to create seamlessly silky smooth transitions, it's ideal to mix the intro section of the next song at the outro section of the current song. This way, when the outro of the current song ends, the first verse or buildup of the next song begins. Now if you want to really raise your crowd's energy to the stratosphere, it's ideal to mix the next song's build-up section at the current song's chorus section, so that when the current song's chorus ends, the next song's chorus begins. Now, it's important to note that the effectiveness of these transitions and their impact on the crowd largely depends on the songs you're playing rather than solely on where you mix in and out of each song. So you can think of it as a 1 plus 1 equal 3 type of concept. When you play a powerful first song and follow it up with an equally impactful second song, the effect on the crowd can be mind-blowing, far surpassing the impact of playing those two songs separately. So all in all, song selection is key. And pro DJs download all their songs from DJ Record Pools. And you can think of DJ Record Pools as huge libraries of music of all genres where DJs can download all the tracks they could ever need. And the DJ Record Pool I use to get all my music from is Crate Connect. And you can get a huge discount on their services by using the coupon code DJ Carlo when you sign up on their site. Now, it's important to admit that our timing in triggering the next song in will never be perfect. There will of course be instances where we miss our intended mix in point. However, to address this issue, we have the next technique. DJs like James Hype and Long Story Short are known for incorporating insane looping techniques to enhance their performances. Now the reality is, most typical DJs do not employ such techniques. This is because they can be quite challenging to execute and unfortunately, they are rarely appreciated by audiences who primarily seek to dance and have a good time. So DJs in the top 100 list often utilize loops as transition points within their sets. Now there are two common methods DJs use to activate loops. The first method involves simply pressing a button to activate a predetermined loop. However, this method, while easy to use, does not offer the same level of flexibility as the second method, which involves pressing the in and out buttons. So with that said, let's make a 4-beat loop. Press the exit button to exit the loop. This manual looping method 
is predominantly used by professional DJs as it provides greater control over the length of the loop. So the in button marks the section where the loop will begin and the out button marks the section where the loop will end. Now the advantage of manual loops is that they can be any size you want depending on when you press the out button. For instance, you can create a long loop or you can make a short loop. So with those looping methods in mind, let's now move on to the two most common ways Pro DJs use loops as transition points. Playing a track exactly at the mix in point can be quite challenging and even experienced DJs may occasionally miss your timing or even choose to forgo sectional mixing. In such situations, DJs employ loops as emergency transition points. <laughs> For instance, if they mix their next song too late, they can create a loop on the current song to compensate for any discrepancy. When DJs aim to ride the crowd's energy and amplify the excitement, they often utilize loops on their current song while mixing in the next song's build-up section. The two essential keys are to activate a 4-beat loop on the section of the current song where there are minimal vocals or drums, and to trigger and play the build-up section of the next song at the same time. To generate even more hype for their buildup, DJs tighten the 4-beat loop using the 1-off X button. So they'll gradually tighten the loop of the current song as the next song approaches its drop section. Oh yeah. Highly skilled DJs like Long Story Short though, Take this looping technique to a whole nother level. And if you guys want to learn how to mix to any BPM and genre using loops, then this video here is a must watch.